This is Democracy Now! as we end today's show with the news that the nation's two largest cable providers plan to merge. Comcast has announced plans to buy Time Warner Cable at a cost of more than $45 billion in stock. The takeover would allow Comcast to provide cable service to a third of American households and give it a virtual monopoly in 19 of the 20 largest media markets. Consumer groups say they'll oppose the deal. Free Press said, quote, in an already uncompetitive market with high prices that keep going up and up, a merge of the two biggest cable companies should be unthinkable. This deal would be a disaster for consumers and must be stopped, Free Press said. But Comcast CEO Brian Roberts appeared on CNBC and praised the deal as pro-competitive and pro-consumer. We've we spent a lot of time thinking about it. It's a really special transaction for both Time Warner Cable and for Comcast. Shareholders are employees and mostly our customers. Um, the deal it's pro-competitive, it's pro-consumer, we're going to be able to bring better products, faster internet, more channels, on-demand, TV everywhere, and a, and a national, local platform that's really special. So we're optimistic we can get this approved. That's Comcast CEO Brian Roberts. From where we go to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Michael Hopps, member of the Federal Communications Commission from 2001 to 2011, now leads the Media and Democracy Reform Initiative at Common Cause. Michael Hopps, welcome back to Democracy Now! Talk about the significance of this. Well, still, it's a possible merger. It's not a done deal. Good morning, Amy. It's great to be with you again. Uh, this is just such a far-reaching deal. Uh, it should be dead on arrival uh, when it gets to the Department of Justice and the Federal Communications Commission for approval. This is the whole shooting match. It's broadband, it's broadcast, it's content, it's distribution, it's the medium and the message, it's telecom, uh, and it's media too. And it just uh, would confer a degree of control over our news and information infrastructure that no company should be allowed to have. And all of this is happening in a market where consumer prices are going up and up and up, and competition is going down, down, down. Now, Comcast just bought NBC Universal. Explain how this works. <laughs> well, it works be of a combination of uh, private sector consolidation that we've seen for 15 or 20 years now with this in long cycle of approvals by the Federal Communications Commission and the Department of Justice blessing all of, uh, all of these deals. So you're right, Comcast just got through absorbing NBC Universal last year, and now it's got enough money to go out and buy the second largest uh, cable company uh, in the United States of America. You know, they might think it's uh, good, and it is good for business, but what this amounts to really is the cableization of the Internet. And if we who are reposing so much confidence in the Internet to create opportunity in this country, to open the doors of opportunity to everybody, are going to allow the Internet to be cableized and to be controlled by a few gatekeepers who not only do the distribution but control the content and can block websites. Uh, we are just doing irreparable damage to the opportunity creating potential of broadband and the Internet. Analysts predict Comcast will launch a lobbying blitz similar to one uh, when it won approval of the takeover of NBC Universal in 2011. It's already hired FCC Commissioner mm. Meredith Atwell Baker, who signed off on its NBC right. deal, uh, right. your colleague. Meanwhile, the news website Republic Report has revealed at least two of the officials who oversee antitrust enforcement, enforcement have close ties to Comcast. The head of the Justice Department's antitrust division, William Baer, was a lawyer representing NBC in its push for the merger with Comcast. And Maureen Olhausen, one of four commissioners on the Federal Trade Commission, provided legal counsel for Comcast as an attorney just before joining the commission. Michael Copps. You don't need, you don't need an analyst and you don't need a prediction to that. That lobbying team, uh, wheelbarrows full of money, uh, uh, legions of lobbyists are at work on this. Uh, our society right now is controlled uh, more by money, I think, than in any era since the notorious Gilded Age back at the end of the 19th century. Uh, what we all need to realize in this country is if there's, there's never going to be democracy now until we have media democracy now, and we're not going to get media democracy now until we 
put the brakes on this mindless consolidation we've been going through for the last 15 or 20 years and put the Federal Communications Commission back in the business of protecting the public interest. Now, I mean, this is different from other mergers because these are media organizations. So, yes, they're hiring all the um, very powerful lobbyists, but they've got networks. I mean, watching MSC, NBC well, exactly. the day this was announced, um, they were hailing this from top to bottom. <laughs> Of course, they're all going to be employed by him. That's right. This is, this is con content and distribution. This is the John D. Rockefeller recipe for, uh, for monopoly control. You've got the whole thing. When you're controlling the programs, designing the programs, and distributing them, or deciding whether they're not going to be distributed, when you have the power to block a little website or to block democracy now, you're in control of the civic dialogue of this country. And we have already gone to dangerous places with uh, the civic dialogue in our country because we don't have the news and information that we used to have. We don't have the journalism we used to have. And a lot of that is because of this consolidation and because of the uh, FCC being absent without leave from its public interest oversight capacity. This will be a good test to see if that new FCC can really begin to represent the common good. This is Democratic Senator Al Franken. He was with CNN's Jake Tapper on a very cold last Thursday uh, in mm. Washington. Inexplicably, they were standing outside. Comcast has already, uh, uh, Franken said, Comcast has already failed to comply with conditions it agreed to in its purchase of NBC Universal. CNN is a cable network news. Yes, it's cable, a, cable it's network. what it is. Yeah. Okay, there's a thing called neighborhooding. You know what that is, right? That, uh, well, it means that CNN and MSNBC and Fox News. Put them all near each other. All near each other. Well, they were supposed to put Bloomberg in the same neighborhood, but because Bloomberg competes with CNBC, which is a, a financial news network, Comcast didn't comply with that. And they finally had to be ordered to do that. But they fought it uh, to uh, the tooth and nail. And that is Democratic Senator Al Franken. Uh, Michael Copps, your response, and since we only have this last 45 seconds, also talk about the current FCC law to require sponsorship disclosure of political ads. Well, this is really important. You know, Congress is not going to pass uh, any act uh, helping us reform the role of big money in politics. But there exists right now at the Federal Communications Commission since the 1920s, sponsorship identification laws, which require not just commercial but political sponsors to divulge who's really paying for these ads. So when you see an ad saying, brought to you by citizens for Purple Mountain Majesties and Amber Ways of Grain, you don't have a clue who that is. It might be a chemical company dumping sludge into the Great Lakes. Section 317 should be employed to demand the names of the people who are really behind that ad. The FCC can do that itself. It can update these rules that have been on the books for ages. And we can begin to have some political money reform in this country. We can shine some sunshine uh, on who's sponsoring these ads. Michael Copps, I want to thank you for being with us, a former member of the Federal Communications Commission for more than a year.